Greetings everybody, welcome back to the channel. I hope you guys have had a great week so far. Let's just go ahead and get into today's video. Um, over the past couple weeks, I've put out a few videos just covering some bash commands. And I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of turn this into a bash series, I guess. Um, I really wanna dig into bash, I love it. It's such a great tool. Um, but for now, I'm just gonna do another one of the great commands or tools you can use in bash, and that is the set command or the set built-in whatever you want to call it that's what we're going to cover today so let's go ahead and launch a terminal we're going to clear the screen and zoom in and then I have a directory that I made just like in the awk and said videos so we're going to cd into set demo.sh and you can see I've got file 1.txt file 2.txt file 3.txt and lines.txt now I've also got three scripts here set demo 1 set demo 2 and set demo 3 so we're going to walk through each one of these scripts they each get progressively more I don't want to say harder but they each cover a different option that you can enable with the set command. So let's go ahead and take a look at the first one set demo 1.sh so if we do cat set demo one dot sh you can see it's just a short little script it basically runs one command and that's ls and then we have the glob or the star here dot txt now you can see i've got all these txt files in here and we all know that normally the ls and then having the star dot txt is going to list out all of the dot txt files right so let's go ahead and clear the screen and let's run that script so we're going to do set demo one dot sh and hit enter and wait a minute, what do we got here? We got ls cannot access star.txt, no such file or directory. Why is that? Well, let's go ahead and vim into set demo one or set demo one.sh, and you can see what this dash f flag does is it disables file name expansion or globbing, which means if you use the set f command, um, either from your command line or in a script, any, anywhere between the set minus F and the set plus F, file globbing or file name expansion and globbing will be uh, disabled. So what this does now, instead of looking for all the .txt files, is it looks for a star.txt file. And since it doesn't see a star.txt file, we won't return anything. It says it can't find it. So what can we do? Let's go ahead and see that in action. Remember, it didn't show up before, so if we actually insert, and we're going to comment that out and we're going to write and quit and now let's go ahead and run that script again you can see right here the first time we ran it we got cannot access star.txt no such file directory now if we do set demo onesh and hit enter you can see it actually lists out all of them because now globbing is enabled again so the set dash f command disables file name expansion or globbing so that way if you have file names with special characters or stuff like that in them um, it will allow you to run the ls command or whatever else on those not just ls but it will allow you to actually it will read those as actual characters and not uh, use shell expansion on them so that's the set dash f command now again, this is not an exhaustive study of this. This isn't me covering in detail what each one of these does. This isn't super technical. This just kind of gives you an idea of what these do. So let's clear the screen and let's cut out set demo 2sh Now set demo 2 we're gonna have the set dash E flag. So this is gonna enable exit on error for like a critical section of your script. You can see right here we've got this script and we have set dash E and we're gonna copy an important file.txt to the backup location. And then once we're done doing that, we're gonna turn that off. Um, and then we are gonna echo the backup operation completed, continuing with the script and performing other non-critical operations. So let's go ahead and clear the screen and let's go ahead and run set demo 2.sh. And we're gonna hit enter. And you can see we cannot stat important underscore file dot text no such file or directory well if we do an ls you can see we don't have the important underscore file dot text so it actually found that it didn't have that file so it could not complete that function so it exited so what happens if you don't have um, this set so let's go ahead and vim into set demo 2.sh and we are going to comment this out and now basically what we should see is we should actually run through this whole script the first time we had this set it found it couldn't do this so it exited the script so now watch what happens when we turn that off 
So now we're going to go back and we're going to run set demo2.sh again. And sure, it says it cannot stat the important file.txt because we don't have it, but it continued on with the script. So um, turning on the dash E flag, if you have an important portion of your script or if you just want it to exit anywhere it fails and not continue on with the rest of the script, set dash E is a great, uh, great command and great flag to use. So let's go ahead and clear the screen and let's actually cat set demo3.sh. This one's a little longer, so this is going to enable strict error handling and treat unset variables as an error. So we have set dash eu. So we just used the e flag before for exiting uh, if there's an error. Now we're going to use the u flag for any unset variables. So basically what this is going to do is it's going to run through and if we don't give this thing an argument or there's any variable unset, it is going to exit out and uh, stop the script. So let's go ahead and clear the screen and let's run set demo.sh, uh, excuse me, set demo3.sh, and you can see, oh wait, error, file not found. Um, let's go ahead and cat that file again, and see what this is really gonna do is we were gonna process a file. So what it was looking for is we have this function process file, local file name, dollar sign one, that is looking for the first argument. So we, when we run this script, it is looking for us to give it a file name. If no file name, then echo error file name not found is what we see right up here. Or if we give it a, the name of a file that doesn't exist, it's going to say file name not found. And it's going to give you the actual file name that you input there. Otherwise, it's going to do the line count and it is going to uh, run the uh, word count dash L, which is going to count the lines and it's going to pipe that file name you just gave it or whatever file you just gave it into that word count um, command and it is going to echo the file name um, and it's going to echo that it has however many lines it has in it. So basically this is basically just taking the input of a file and counting out the lines and outputting it and if you don't give it a file name or you give it an incorrect file name it's going to exit. So let's go ahead and see that in action again. So we are going to do set demo3.sh and we're going to give it a file name that we don't have in our directory. So let's do word.txt and hit enter. Oh, file word.txt not found. Well, um, now let's give it a file we do have in there. So we're going to do uh, demo3.sh and we're going to do lines.txt. We're going to hit enter and it says, look, file lines.txt has five lanes, lines, excuse me, script completed successfully. So now if we vim into set demo3.sh and let's go ahead and shut that off. So we're going to comment out that set dash eu. We're going to write and quit. Now let's go ahead and run it and let's give it, um, oops, I want to vim. Let's give it the file name that doesn't exist. So word.txt and hit enter. And you can see it still told you that word.txt is not found, but it told you the script completed successfully as well. So what that did is even though it had an incorrect variable or an unset variable, because word.txt is, is not a file that is located in the directory, then it actually told you it couldn't find it, but it still continued on with the script. So if we give it nothing at all, again, it still continues on with the script even though that unset variable is, um, or that variable is unset. So now let's go ahead and do set demo3.sh lines.txt and hit enter and there you go, it completes successfully. Those are just three of the different ways you can use the set command. Again, you can uh, disable file, file name expansion or globbing. Um, you can have it exit on error or you can have it uh, exit with unset, when there's unset variables. Um, these are just three of the kind of basic things you can do with set. Again, set is a very powerful tool that you can use in your scripts or from your command line to really take control of what's going on with your commands and what's going on with your scripts. Uh, give you a little more information, some debugging power, stuff like that. So again, this isn't exhaustive. This is just a very basic coverage of some of the cool things you can do with set and some of the things you can use it for. So I hope you found this interesting um, and I hope you're looking looking forward to more bash content because I think I'm going to really start focusing on some more of that um, and just kind of introduce some people to the wonderful world of bash. So if you aren't familiar with it, keep watching. We're going to get more of these out and uh, yeah, I hope you guys have a great rest of your evening, a great rest of your day. Stay safe and God bless.